everyone, I'm Ben from Catch Pro Australia and this is the latest edition of Lawn Care Skull Sessions with my co-host, the bearded one. Wow. How you going, brother? Good, man. How you doing? Mm. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I'm in two minds. The, the weather is gloomy and grey, mm. so um, I'd like to commit suicide. Ooh. But um, we're not crazy busy with work so that kind of fucks with me a little bit too yeah but what do you think it is that fucks you up with the weather do you think it's like the temperature the fucking the, just the the gloominess like it is a shitty day but uh like when it's just beautiful and sunny right you don't have an excuse to be angry yeah that's true you know like it's yeah, just the like sun's out shining you know, away and yeah. you you got to shine bright with it yeah so um but like even apart from all of that, it's just like I've just had to do just heaps of family and kids stuff lately and um, yeah, it just wears you down after yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. You're a busy bee, mate. You're always on the move. It's uh, it's quite tiring to watch. And my, <laughs> my body is fucking caning. <laughs> I've, um, I'm trying to paint the side of my house. I saw. And i got like these four metre trestles and <laughs> then it's not a one person job. How the moving. fuck did you, did you get them up by yourself or? Yeah. Oh. And yesterday I had the. Uh, Was that a day job just to get the trestle up? Take, took a long time. Yeah, but would have. <laughs> I tried to move it yesterday and I had the plank and I'm doing these ones. <laughs> no one knows what that is. It looks like he's climbing through the jungle, like Tarzan. And one of them dropped off the other side and just fucking cracked me right in the top of the head. <laughs> Imagine if you're wearing a hat with the death button. Oh, oh. well, I you mean, remember that as a kid, the I, death button? Yeah, but I mean, a steel plank is just as bad. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to make it better. So yeah, man, we've been hustling. Oh, that's good, um, man. But yeah. uh, you know, apart from that, you know, there's. You know, it's not like I can whinge about life <laughs> uh, when there's people out there doing it tougher than we are. That's it. That's it. Uh, it's um, It's been a fucking odd week this week. We had no rain forecast, zero rain forecast, and we've had like three or four showers. So cheers, fucking Bureau of Meteorology. That um, That's not real real flash when you go out and you fucking spray for a whole day and then in the afternoon some little prick clouds roll in and pitter patter. Yeah, we didn't get it until I don't. It, it. I mean, I'm. I reckon it was nighttime when we got like maybe six o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, it was afternoon. It was just so, gone dark when I started. Um, um, but yeah, it it's annoying. But when it you is started it is. raining, when I yeah when I started raining, when I got so wet. So the other thing is, some people might have seen on social media, me and the bearded lawnsman had a few shots the other night, Oof. and I did my first power hurl in my. Five years. <laughs> and I've always been like a pretty good spewer. Like it sort of, you know, wasn't something that bothered me that much. <laughs> but, mate, the next day all of my stomach muscles, throat muscles, everything were just fully axed. You were it. cooked. Oh, no. Like it takes a lot of energy to just, you know, like. <sighs> yeah. Um, Trust me, I know. So anyway, it was a little bit embarrassing because it was my first power hurl in front of me kids. Oh, okay. And there was a little split second where they were like proper worried. Like, oh my God, my dad's going to die. And then Vicky was like, nah, girls, he's fine. He's good at this. <laughs> and <laughs> and then they all started laughing at me. Okay. But it was pretty embarrassing. Um, yeah. So. Um, I don't think Archie's heard me spew before. I know Chloe has. I've had some of the fucking worst. She's brought some of the worst gastro bugs on earth home. And um, I remember one time just like spewing and shitting at the same time. It was just fucking incredible. Like it just was like, <laughs> it was like weight loss. It was like extreme weight loss. It was, it was crazy. Nothing, nothing compares to that. Like I've, I've had Thai belly and stuff like that when we were over in Thailand and I was really sick then. But this thing that she... Well, I mean, it could have been one of the other kids. I don't know. We all fucking ended up with it. But I actually ended up in hospital. And, um, you know, it's not never a fun thing when, you know, this 21-year-old blonde nurse walks over and she's like, oh, so can you tell me about what's happening? I was like, yeah, I shit my pants in front of my kids. Um, I may have shit the bed. I was too sick to even check. And um, I, I've been crawling around from my bed to the shower 
uh, so things can just flow freely and I don't have to worry. Um, so that was fun. Uh, it's almost as bad as when I was in that car crash and, and this nurse rolled in and she's like, so what, um, how are you feeling? You know, what hurts? I'm like, oh, I really like my, my butthole hurts so bad. <laughs> and she just laughed at me and I was like, no, it really hurts. Like I can't, I can't sit down probably. And she was just like, oh, here's some Panadol, you know, you've been in a car crash and it's, it'll be fine. I'm fucking like, okay. So three years later, I couldn't sit down properly. I'm sitting on a donut pillow. And I'm like, oh, man, someone, yeah. someone finger me better. Well, I had, I've got two nurse stories. Oh, One was um, I had to have my appendix taken out. Oh, that was when we first met. Nah. After, on in your yeah. recovery, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Millsy, um, Millsy brought me around to your place. Yeah. So I think I was I was probably 17. Yeah. Um, and anyway, I remember just before we went into theatre, they were going to prep me. <laughs> and I've got like, you know, those like see-through undies? That it, yeah. It's just like one of the little shower hats. Yeah. But they're undies. Yeah. And the ladies pulled it down and I'm already like fully veated, shaved, everything. Like, that's just how. She's I, like, are you a swimmer? <laughs> that's, just, <laughs> that's just how I was rolling. Now, my mum was there. Oh, no. And the, she's, it was just awkward as hell, right? Yeah. Anyway, buddy. Afterwards, they wanted me to, I just wanted to go home. Fuck like, it, you would. And it was like, so I stayed in there for the night and the next day they just wanted to make sure you could go to the toilet or yeah. whatever. And they gave me this bedpan and I was like, you got to be fucking serious. <laughs> Get me up. So I got up, I had a gown on um, and went to the toilet. Everything was fine. I was by myself. And then somehow my gown was coming un- <laughs> untied. Yeah. And legit, as soon as this lady opened up the door, the whole gown just fell off me. <laughs> and I was like really skinny and fucked up at the time. And I just looked down at my dick and I was just like, oh, man. This is <laughs> you know when you get sick, dick? Yeah. And, um, you know, she was really professional. She's like, oh, that's all right. I'll come pick it up. And I was thinking like, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I just want oh, to go home. Yeah, it's just take me home. I got an, another one where I fucking nearly cut my dick and balls off with an angle grinder. And my mum and my nan had to come and pick me up from in front of a preschool where it happened. I was fucking. Was uh, the grinder still attached? Yeah. And it, back and back then it would have had electricity cord. Too, yeah, it did. it did. There was no fucking, no battery I could pop out. So, um, yeah, I, I fucking, I basically was grinding the bottom of this chair and. Um, <laughs> Vicky's fucking, done that before. Oh, really? Grinding the bottom of a chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I, um, I hit the corner and it bounced off, hit my shorts and it just vacuumed up my shorts all the way up and it like cut me all the way up my leg. Just like Spider-Man, eh? Hey, yeah, yeah. It was, it was hey. like that. Like Spider-Man was oh, like no, coming me. <laughs> up the water spout. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it, it fucking went all the way up one leg, across my balls, sliced my nuts, um, and the, ba- and the base of my shaft and onto the other, other leg. I'm lucky my, my schnoodle didn't get caught in it. How good, would that it up. how good would it have been if it just circumcised you at the same time? No way. Yeah. I like wearing my fleecy. Nah, it's no, yeah, it's nah, good no for, good, eh? It's good for what ails you. Um, um yeah, but fucking, oh, mum, can, can you come get me? I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding in front of a kindergarten. And, um, yeah, she had to come pick me up and take me to the hospital. And this Irish nurse was like, hey, how did you do this? In an Irish accent. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> how did you do this, my lovely? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the worst thing was, like, I, it was all caught up and I was, like, you know, panic mode. So I've, like, gone to unravel it and I hadn't turned it off yet. It had just cut out. Like, it had, like, a safety cut. And as soon as I started unraveling oh, my undies, just, it would have just bogged down. Yeah, it just powered back up and it was just like nye, 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 trying to fucking take my manhood. But um nah, Lou, Lou still likes it. Might look a bit fucking damaged, but it's cool. It's like that shit sausage that you put in the microwave for too long. You know how you cook hot dogs and just one comes out just fucking mutilated. <laughs> oh, oh my shit. goodness. Well, 
On to some industry talk. Ooh. Um, just want to put a little disclaimer out. Actually, it's more of an apology. Um, I apologize for last week's episode. Yeah. I look, mean, people liked it. Yeah. And and, and we, we actually had huge downloads. Yeah. It was um, good. So, um, but I mean, I don't know. We were just flat that day. It was right? a fuck day. It, it was, was actually flat. Ella's birthday. Yeah. When we recorded. I, um, Look, I thought I thought coming out and doing stuff would be a good distraction, but uh, it kicked my ass, man. That was a fucking emotional day. So, um, yeah, apologies for that episode. It was a bit rough, but hopefully there was a few laughs involved. So, and, and thanks to the folks that reached out to us about the new gear. Yes, we got the heads up. We need to crank up the crank volume. It up. Pump up a jam. Pump, pump it, it up. up. Pump it up. Um, yeah. So hopefully we're doing that now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, also nobody liked the camera angle. Okay. Yeah. Was it too much of me? I don't know. I think was I it not, was just different. Am I not sexy enough Some, to be in the front? Sometimes people just don't like change. Yeah, I get it. So get it. you're um, not, you're not big on change. Louie's not big on change. No, I'm like all fucked up. Chloe, Chloe doesn't like change. I um, fucking love it. I love diversity. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, hopefully... Uh, we don't cook it again. Um, yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's the goal. But uh, hey, big shout out to Cress. I um, I t- I didn't know that they they listened to our um podcast, which is pretty fucking cool. I reached out to invite them to my event on the nineteenth of August, and um, they're like, yeah, we've been listening to the podcast. I was like, fuck, I hope we didn't talk any shit. I mean, I don't think we said anything bad. I think we talked about their lineup being pretty small, but and maybe their twenty k battery charging system not for everyone. But I don't think we spoke about that. Oh, did um, we? Oh, okay. Well, and fuck, we didn't we didn't give them much to go with. I that. mean, I know I made comments about them not having a pole hedger, which I actually do believe is a pretty big fail. Huge um, in, in the Australian market, yeah. just because and and like I said, it's not even a man. It's not a diss. No, it's just constructive. Uh, feedback because I really do think for a contractor looking to dip their toes um, in the battery market, really I think a chainsaw and a pole hedger is where it makes sense the most. 100%. Like yeah. first up. Yeah. Um, I know that there's lots of people that run the mowers and stuff like that, yeah. um, but there's also a lot of people that don't. Yeah. So the thing is, it's a, it's a new product, new kids on the block, as I called them. And, and um, yeah, hopefully they come to the party with some some new, you know, innovative tools. Yeah. I mean, they've got a fucking pretty good system going. But I mean, to further to further my comment, I, I that's what I like honestly think. And obviously, it's just an opinion, but really, like, if there's contractors out there now that have like a petrol handheld hedge trimmer, I just, I don't understand why they're doing that. If they've bought one in the last two years, yeah, I just, I just think that that handheld hedge trimmer and a chainsaw, yeah. but then not only that, like I know you still have petrol hedges for yeah, you look, saying, you know, hedge reductions and the yeah, bigger ones, yeah. but I still don't think even really – um, like I, I still think your yeah, everyday hedge trimming, the, all of the battery hedges now are well and truly capable of it. Yeah. Well, the, the reason I've got that multi-tool is because it's a multi-tool. Um, and because realistically, like if I'm going to do a job, I'll, I'll probably run that big, big bopper through it first and then I'll do the finesse work with a battery. Um, I mean the Makita, when they do their demos, they fucking cut through like two finger girth dowel oh really um, with a hedger yeah two finger um, girth mm. um that's someone i haven't heard back from yet is makita that's 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 concerning i'd like them to come along to my event um makita yeah. do you listen makita are you out there do you listen Oi, Makita, get your fucking head out of your ass and listen to us <laughs> um <laughs> and shout out to andrew triffitt too from husfana We've been playing fucking phone tag for the last week and um, yesterday there was a period where I was picking up kids with Lou and... You said period. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, back and forth, literally like four phone calls. He called me, I called him, 
Then he tried to call me back and I'm like, fuck this. Like, just send him a text. I'm like, just send me a fucking email. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just getting too difficult. But then after I sent that, he tried to ring back. I'm like, God, he really wants to talk to me. I'm like, well, soon we'll get together. But he, um, yeah, hopefully they, they come along. Hopefully he comes up. Guess what happened to me? <gasps> what happened to you, Benny? Someone from the UK reached out. They wanted some X-Blades. Okay. And we're like, righto, send your name. You know, like Vicky was kind of dealing with it. And he was a lord. A lord? Yeah. Are you fucking for realsies? Yeah. So his name was like Lord fucking. <laughs> lord fucking Byron. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, we've had people reach out from the UK or Canada or something like that before. And usually when they see the shipping, it's like, no, nah, that yeah. kills the deal. And Tell me he was keen. Tell he me. He like. Place the order straight away. Dude, that's it's a so special cool. order. Yeah, for sure. So there's like a lord out there that is running X Blades. And all over your catch pro site. Maybe you'll tell all of his lord friends. Yeah. So anyway, we I wonder if he knows Lord. We Googled what a Lord is. Oh, okay. And it's like someone high up in society. Okay. So me? Am I a lord? You could be a lord. <laughs> I'm a gutter uh. lord. <laughs> I'm just before. I'm almost to the lordship. I'm a housing commission lord. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a landlord. Oh, yeah, buy a catch, probably a dog. <laughs> um, so anyway, that was really cool. That is cool, man. That's something um, different. It's diverse. Yeah. Um, and some dude from Canada, he's been fucking spamming our skull sessions like crazy. Oh, yeah. Tagging us and everything. That's pretty cool. Apparently, he wants to come on the podcast. Apparently, he like started up a mowing business and it's like a $2 million a year thing now. Sick. Um, and he apparently also has something to do with the Canadian Basketball Association. Damn. So um, anyway, I, I don't know if it's like full spam or if it's real, but because it, it's, it's like an agent that is speaking on his behalf. Oh, okay. And they're like, yeah, we really want to, you know, get on the skull sessions. And, you know, I was just like, look, man, I'll just, just, yeah, let me suss it with BJ. Yeah, we'll, we'll chat about so that. So we're actually talking about it for the first time on air. Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey, hey, Canada. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, what else is what else is in the news? Oh, uh, so can I talk about my event for a bit? Do you care? Yeah, well, before we get there. All right. Um. I've got a topic that I want to bring up. It's not really like a full topic for, you know, a whole episode. Yeah. But contractors, if you're listening, I want to talk about smashed windows on the job. Ooh, yeah. Um, now, you know, we see maybe one or two posts publicly, weekly. Yeah. About smashed at windows. Least, at least. Um, you know, some people with their first virgin Oh, window breaker, that virgin pop. It fucking it's seared in your brain like that noise. Like I'm hearing, I'm hearing a reverb of mine right now. Just that. Yeah, and you I'm know like, the Stone Cold. Oh, the, the, yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, it depends if it's that safety glass, and it's a bit different. Yeah, it's like do you, it's like pew. Do you um? Do you think when? <laughs> Yeah, it does. It falls and then you fucking turn around and come back five minutes later to show the boys. <laughs> it's fucking fallen another foot radius around. It's just fallen down. Oh, fuck. Fuck windows. But what I want to talk about. Sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, did did you, when you were on the on the tools, did you go through periods where you would smash a bunch of windows in a, in a small window? Oh, look, not necessarily. Not me personally. Okay. Like I... Um, I have I smashed my own window recently. Oof. Like that was the most recent one that I oh actually I think I did one. <laughs> I did one at, at, at the, the village, village right when, when you bought the contract. Yeah, when I bought the contract, you were showing me showing me around, and you're like, "Yeah, come in, we'll, we'll bip this and <laughs> go back." And it's a fucking six hundred dollar window. <laughs> um. So look, I, I wasn't a typical window breaker. Yeah. Um. I had. I remember. I I had definitely done a car window. Uh, previous to that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, look, for the amount of time that I actually whipper snipped, like I, my odds were good. Yeah, pretty good hit. But rate. I had workers that were just fucking yeah. like, like yeah. 
Like if I was them, I'd go like play the pokies or something. <laughs> Poor Will, his first day, he popped a car window. First day at Scrubby, pop. And yeah. uh, lady had just jumped on the committee. So you fucking sure as shit that I got that one fixed ASAP. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Like he was mortified. Like he was like, oh, my God, I thought I was going to get fired on my first day. I was like, dude, it's a window. Like, you know, it happens. Yeah. That's our industry. So, But what I wanted to really talk about was like I saw a post where it the window wasn't cracked or like full mad smashed. It had a crack in it. Yeah. And it just was sus. Like he, the person just, you know, didn't really believe that they'd done it. Like it didn't look fresh. And we've heard of stories where people try and have a go. Yeah. You know, they're trying to get sort of something for nothing. And then I saw another post where this client was just being difficult as shit and wouldn't let the contractor um, inspect it. Oh, okay. And then wouldn't let the contractor... Um, organize his own glazier. Yes. Yeah. And the per- the the client was just being an asshole. Like, no, I've got this. You know, we're getting um, you know, O'Brien or whoever to come out and fix it. Um, and it was just a difficult situation. Like, I think if you're being held responsible for something, you have the right to go and get three quotes. Yeah. For or sure. to use your own glazier. Um, you know, whether you choose to put it on your own insurance or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So I, I feel like in that case, I would fucking, I would pull insurance in and say, look, this customer is being difficult because you know, if they're going to go and do their own thing, then it's going to cost you a fortune. Yeah. And it's no different really to like, if you're in a car accident, like I know uh, one time I had a mowing trailer on, I've rocked up to a job and I just didn't realize someone parked behind me. Oh. And I was like full flying and everything. And I just reversed back straight into this dude's car. Oh, bummer. And it was really embarrassing. And buddy, I sort of, you know, gave him my details and they, they came back to me and they're like, oh, and, and there was fuck all damage. Yeah. And they came back to me and they're like, oh, it's going to be, you know, 2700 to fix this. And I was like, so his insurance company rang me. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm not paying anything until I go and get my own quotes. Yeah. Um, and I put my foot down and honestly, nothing ever happened. Oh. Like he obviously didn't go through and get it fixed. Oh, okay. Um, and if I had just, you know, like fucking. Yeah. Was it fault- actually an insurance company that rang you? Well, I'm not sure, but they're Maybe just like, oh, get a th- th- it's going to cost, ex- it's going to cost X amount. You need to pay this. And I was like, no, like I'm going to, yeah. I've got to ring like my insurance company. Yeah. And I have to get, a couple of quotes because I know how these insurance companies work. Yeah. Um, but look back to the window smashing. Um, there has been conversations about this topic in the past. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I just think with how far we've all as a community lifted our industry, I think it's time to start protecting our contractors. And even if it's just a, a text message, um, before you start a job, that outlines, you know, it'll be like all the same political drama yeah, shit. Yeah. Fucking, but, you know, make it so that, like, you don't have to take on that that residential job unless that person is aware that, hey, if the window gets smashed, like, we're not liable. Yeah, look, I, I agree that uh, if, if that's something that you're worried about, maybe um, every customer gets a service agreement. And I think that a lot of people are going that way. Like service agreements are, you know, fucking dime a dozen these days. You can you can get one off the internet, lickety split, and just tailor it to your business. But um, no, I look, I I feel. Do like you agree? I I do in some regards, and I don't in others. I agree that. T- tell if, me first why you don't agree. Let's let's do this. Come so on. I don't agree with people who don't have service service agreements in place because you've taken the risk. You've you haven't said anything to your customer in regards to the rocks in the garden or you, you've taken that risk. You, you haven't covered yourself. Uh, and as a business, covering your ass is number one. I so, agree I agree with you for that. I'm yeah. just talking about the actual windows smashing, you know, um, scenario. Yeah. 
No, there's I, an, yeah, there's a flip side. To what it. I'm saying is, I don't think contractors should be liable. Do you? Don't worry about the agreement yet. Just, just, the, just the scenario. Yes, I do. I do think. Okay, now I want you to tell me why. So I think like it's the same as if a if a tradie comes to your house and accidentally starts a fire. You know, doing something that you know, potential like there could have been a risk there, but it wasn't. Look, the reason why I disagree with you is because they're not our rocks. Yeah. Like we're providing service. Like But what happens if you're on a footpath and you and you fucking put a rock from a footpath through someone's window? Well, I where still do, where think do you go, where do you go with that? Do well, you do you fucking approach the council and hammer them out for that or Well, I mean, like that's, I said, <laughs> that's flogging a fucking dead horse there. But you know, like I said, like they're not then I'm not talking about like I, I get it if if you're a tree lopper and you cut down a tree and it fucking pulverizes someone's house. Yeah. I I understand that's I understand that this this argument it's the same thing. Yeah. But I'm really trying to differentiate it. There's just so many variables. I'm really trying to differentiate these scenarios. Yeah. Um because let's face it, new contractors coming in, they're starting up. Um you know, they might only be making three or four hundred dollars in a day. Yeah. At best. Well, you look, might only be making two hundred bucks and then you smash a four hundred dollar window. Yeah. You you've basically just reached into your pocket Mate, for two days. And it's fucking it's happened. It's happened to me plenty of times. Look, I think it's part of business. Like you you do take risks when you, you have your own business. You have liability insurance for a reason. Um, but there are ways to cover yourself, like in regards to service agreements and blah, 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 all that other bullshit. I do think that if you are a professional and you rock up to a really nice house and you put a rock through someone's window, is it worth going through the bullshit of making them pay for it? And, you know, you are going to get your customer offside. It, it's, it's, um, it's one of those things that y- you will definitely, well, I'd say like, it's not even a 50 50. I'd say it's like a 70% chance that customer is going to be like, well, fuck you, get out of my house. Oh, look, I'll pay for the, it. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with that because, yes, that would leave people salty. Yeah. You got to, you got to wonder if the juice is worth the squeeze because, uh, like, advertising that you're a fully insured business and things like that is a, is a big, is a big get for lawn mowing contractors. So it puts you above the cowboys. Now I can see cowboys. You see those stories all the time, fucking hit and runs, like, oh, we had this guy, no insurance, smash a window, fucking gone. So um yeah, I think I think paying for it is is just part of business. I just think it's way too much of a risk. Um I mean, you think about the amount of times that you whip a sniff in a day, mm-hmm. the chances of you smashing a window are so high. Oh yeah. They really are so high. And look, there's, yeah, and you, you do have to either, you know, minimise those risks by taking... See, I don't mean to sound like all precious <laughs> and because the world is way too precious. Yeah. Um, you know, like, um, I mean, I just have so many examples of the world just being too precious. Mm. But I just want to... I want to separate this conversation from that just because... You know, I really think, you know, I really do think that contractors are just diving in their pockets um, for something that I don't really think that they should be liable for. Well, I'd, like I would love to see an insurance company that actually takes on board uh, professions like ours that do have those risks and do have a, you know, like a, maybe a break window fee or something like that. I mean, fucking 500 bucks for excess every time you pop a window it adds up. Like we we did uh, four or five windows in the space of a month mm. and it fucking drained my nuts. Like we we rinsed through a ton of money doing that because the windows were just over the excess. So I was like, fuck, we'll just pay for the thing, keep our premiums down. But, you know, it, it is a big chunk of money uh, if because we go through patches. That's why I asked you earlier. We go through patches. Like I, I can't. I won't break a window for f- four years and then all of a sudden I'll break fucking three in a month. Mm. Um, and not only that, man, windows are getting expensive. Like 
I remember. Well, everything is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I popped one. Everything's just a fucking rip off. Yeah. Like three three years ago, I popped one, and um, of course it was a fucking high set, and I popped this window way up high, put a rock straight through it. It didn't shatter. But it popped and the fucking rock ended up in the fucking living room where this old fellow who just came out of hospital was in. Anyway, I, I called my glass guy. And that's one thing you really should have is a fucking glass guy on speed dial mm. because there's nothing more professional than if you do something, you pop a window, you fucking get someone to come and fix it ASAP because, you know, not only for security, but, you know, it just makes you look better. Oh, I mean, it's just a complete fuck around for yeah. the client. And like, you use who I use, hey. Yeah. Brendan from Gecko. Yes. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He's really quick, really good. Um, always tries to fit contractors in. And um, I think he does a pretty good price for me. So this this one window that I popped, this two-story, was amber glass. They haven't mm. made it since the 70s. And he fucking, he went to like all of the, I don't know if they're scrap yards or glass, you know, guys that keep old glass. But, yeah, he found a piece. This panel was 300 bucks just for the glass. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it's yeah, look, I, I take it on board as a risk. I think some contracts that I have have um, caveats in them, like we get a certain amount of windows a year. Um, I know when I turned up to one, uh, <laughs> one contract, the previous contractor obviously hadn't been to the Catch Pro Australia website and they weren't running shoot blockers. So all the low-level windows, fuck, man, I, I counted like nine and I sent the list to the body corporate and they were fucking, oh, my God. <laughs> that was, was like, like um, what? Remember um, remember Jubecky? Yes. Yeah, he's just fucking <laughs> gangbanging this window with sticks. Oh, and man. Sticks and grass and stuff. Oh, no, like it's, um, yeah, I'm just, like me and Rusty are just watching one of his YouTube videos and he's just fucking mowing next to this house and the whole house is glass. Yeah. And like the way that the sun's shining, <laughs> with the morning see. dew and everything, you could just you can see the actual wind stream. Oh, and fuck. it's like you just. I mean, obviously because it's a YouTube video, you knew that he he didn't smash one. Yeah, but you're like, oh, bro, you are playing with fire. Oh man, oh. I think Uncle Nankasaurus did one of those too. He put up a video. I was just fucking cringy. I'm like, dude, that's a big window. Fucking get turned around. Oh. Uh, if anyone is Jubecki still around, I think he's still pumping out content, man. Like. Really, he he jumped off the social media thing and oh, yeah, he nah. got got out and just stuck to his YouTube and he's done pretty well, man. Like that rap was fucking gangster ass. <laughs> I fucking love that man. I played that so many times. I was, um, I think Tim's done one as well. Yeah, Tim's done one. I think. Yep. Yeah. No, nah, it's cool, man. Um, um, <laughs> good old G Becky. Yeah, he's a he's a good. If fella. anyone's if anyone's out there listening. Take a look at Jubecky. Tell me if he's still if he's still. He is still. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's still. He used to come up in the algorithms all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but you know, I haven't now. I haven't now it's all fucking that. horse riding and bikini chicks. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Among other things. Oh. Um. So anyway, look, contractors, let us know what you all think. Yeah, am I just I, a fucking dog? Well, I think you are. Yeah. Um, just because. Oof. The look, I think also as contractors, like if you're gonna if you're gonna have an agreement in place, I think you probably need to do your due diligence and do a little bit of a walk around and maybe like I think you should be doing that anyway. Yeah, but you would be expected to like actually probably fill out you know like a a safe work method statement every fucking visit. Uh, not every. Oh. Look, things change, man. Like yeah, we oh, obviously true, like but... when there's when there's something that is an obvious. Um, so here's the thing I just want to say first, I don't, I would hate to see that. Um, I, I'm not one of those people, like I'm, I'm keen on safety yeah. and I understand that, but time is money. Um, and I don't think that residential game, you know, where you're charging 60 or 70 bucks, you know, I, I just think if you have to spend five minutes walking around and filling out a form. I think that's when we've made our industry fucked. Yeah. So look, I, I so I don't want that. But yeah. a typical, you know, um, uh, if you're quoting a place, it's a disclaimer, 
and the the residential client should sign it. Yeah. Um, like and what, then and then that way you just know you're safe at that job forever. Yeah. Whether it's a sixty dollar lawn or a six hundred dollar lawn, I think if you fucking pull out a a like a terms like sort of form, like an agreement, they're gonna they're gonna put you on a pedestal compared to their last guys. Um, and you make sure they read it and things like that. It's just, I don't know. Nah, I you think, just wanted to proofread it and just sign it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll rock up one day and you'll just be taking a shit in their backyard. It's like, well, you signed, you said I could. I mean, at the end of the day, do you think anyone reads the safety sticker on a catch pro? Oh, we put that on every single catch pro. Bet they do when they run the fucking thing into a tree. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't, it, no, it, it, it has it outlines things like yeah. okay if you're not capable of lifting something that's going to weigh 15 kilos don't lift it yeah. I'm not fucking liable yeah um you know and we have other things on there too um you know like if you um, are driving up a hill or you know you need to wear glasses when you're using the catch pro like we have all that stuff on there yeah how many people do you think actually read yeah. that sticker and yeah. abide by any of those yeah 100 percent. but i mean like that's on a product like if you're actually uh you know you do your first service and you're like well you do your quote like i'd say like if you if you take the quote this is our service agreement and look I'm a fucking hypocrite. I don't have service agreements for any residential customers. Well, only we never only for my, my big my big customers, which is most of them. And just wait, with the big customers, you know, you said, oh, okay, you're getting X amount of free windows a year. Yeah. That's no different to um, a residential contractor just getting fed up and being like, okay, I'm going to put this system in place now. It, it is in a way, but with most of my big ones, there is cons cause they're older villages. There's constantly like plumbing. There's constantly fucking oldies digging in gardens and putting shit on the turf that shouldn't be there. And it's like, well, you either fucking, you know, give us a couple of free freebies or, you know, pay the price because it, you're going to be there for fucking 10 times longer surveying the area you know, picking up stones, picking up shit that people have left behind. And that's that's one of the things like when when circumstances change in a backyard, like someone gets a pool fence changed or something and there's a bit of rubble, like you need to address that. You don't don't just fuck around and leave it. Like address that. Send a text message straight to your customer. If you don't have service agreements in, in place, like send a text straight to your customer, like, hey, I've noticed that this is this has happened. Um, can we make sure that, you know, all the rubble's picked up and you know, I, I can't be liable if there, if there's anything that's missed and, and go through a window. Cause that, that is, that's just, you know, fair. I think that's fair. I think if works have gone on in, in a turfed area, you're maintaining the turf. You're not there to fucking rake up after someone else. Um, I think, I think addressing it, but communication, you got to fucking tell them, like you got to say, Hey, you, you got some fucking rocks here. Um, if I put one through your window, it's not on me. And, wait for that confirmation because you don't want to – I know time is money and you got to wait for them to get back to you, but it's fucking you, – you might lose a $60 job for the day or you can pay up a $500 excess fee for a fucking back sliding door window. So, And, you know, on this topic, what – I mean, I, I don't think anything can ever get done about this, but fucking downpipes. <laughs> like how many busted down pipes has everyone seen before? Yeah, look, and it's a real thing. It's like yeah. you know, I'm just not going to fucking whip a snip around here. Yeah, if you know, and I wasn't that guy. Okay, like I, I would just whip a snip. Um, and yes, I've busted down pipes before. Who hasn't? Um, and and a and a good solid down pipe won't bust from whip a snip accord. Yeah. But you know the ones that are all fucked up and just. You yeah, know, just haggis from the sun. Um, but you know what I mean? Like I've had people come out and say like, oh, one of your guys has done this. And it's like, you know, like, okay, I understand that it's broken, but like would you rather us have left it? Like what is the answer? Like what is the solution to this? Yeah, look, you can, up, you can upsell a few things. Um, so I've seen people – uh, use actual PVC pipe that's a little bit larger than the, the, the common diameter that downpipes use. 
and you cut a slit in it and you just fucking open it up and put it around and leave it there because it's cheap and it's effective. Um, I think that's – look, I think, again – If you've got a off, clientele of if a you're, fucking 100 residential, I get that. But if you're charging fucking have top four dollar – pipes. If you're charging top dollar, just but say it's an – if you're not charging ad, top dollar? Well, then you've got to fucking – I mean – you know, you, look, you I, got to. If I, you're gonna do those, if you if you're gonna cop shit for, you know, a fucking twenty dollar lawn, then you know it. You got to look at what you're doing. Oh, I think if you, the more services you can offer, like if you charge them out at, at five bucks a pop for fucking twenty cents worth of PVC pipe, I think that's a that's a mad little add on you can you can throw in. But like just eliminating eliminating the fucking trouble that can come down the road, like all day, like. The amount of customers that we deal with, putting out fires for me now is one of the biggest fucking things that I have to deal with. Um, and I hate when I see my phone light up from a customer. I'm like, it's either going to be a fucking, you know, asking about something that didn't happen or asking about something that can happen. And I always hope it's something that can happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, that's just my thought. I think like as professionals, we should be responsible for any damages we cause in you know except for windows right <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck you shattered me with that no <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm putting it out there i'm putting it out there to contractors um you know like yes i agree with you we should be liable but i just think the rock thing there's just too many variables it's there's such a high chance and it doesn't matter if you've got a fucking whippy guard on or off yeah um, now there are things that operators can do to avoid it. <laughs> I was just about so, to say, if you're um, smashing a bunch of windows. <laughs> yeah. Like I had a young worker, Mitch, um, that, you know, I thought he was careless and reckless. Yeah. Um, and you know, I sort of pulled the brakes up on him and said, you know, like you, you're scalping when you snip, um, you know, you're, you've just, you're not aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Um, all of those things, and I would say that he listened and got better. But there's not always people around to tell these people this stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I do, whilst I understand that the contractor does have to be responsible, I just don't know, like, if you're, like, I know my cousin, who's an operator uh, yep. locally, I know he was whippersnipping in someone's backyard and the fucking neighbor two stories high is hollering out to him, like, you just smashed my bathroom window. <laughs> um, now, I because it's a neighbor, yeah, like, he's liable. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get it. I, I um, do. I like, look, there's, I don't know. I know what I want, and I, you're 100% right. I don't want to be liable for anyone's fucking windows. But the, uh, the truth is, I think, look, like, It'd be very hard to get across that, you know, it's your backyard, it's not my fault. And I think that's kind of the general consensus still within the community. Well, you see when someone posts up who, who's <coughs> liable for this, I think the the vast majority are like, you are. So, yeah, I think so too. But So maybe that... you're fucking wrong, Ben. No, I'm not saying that I'm wrong <laughs> or right. I, no, look, and neither is, am I. This is just a thought and I think, um, you know, with – with the way that the world is going, contractors can use this as an advantage. Yeah. Like it, it, it actually does make me sick the way that the world's going with how precious people are. Yeah. Like I can't remember what someone, someone said something to me on social media. Oh, that's right. It was about um, our email blasts. Oh, okay. And someone was having a huge whinge that they went on our website um, and – they put in their email address yeah, and now they get our monthly emails and was, you know, requesting that I remove them, which is like almost impossible. Like I need to know who they are. I need to go <laughs> through the mailing list of like 10,000 people yeah. and physically remove them. It takes five seconds to unsubscribe from an email. Yeah. Um, and they were sort of blaming catch pro essentially me. Yeah. Um, for like non um consensual marketing non consensual is that was that <laughs> i think that's that's technically correct okay that well anyway um 
<laughs> but I mean, like when you type in your email address, that is the consent. That is, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. And so it, if it, you email me, I get to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking getting to go off this podcast and email you straight away. I got the afternoon free. I'm no. gonna email D Scarlet. Oh <laughs> no. shit. Should have said that. Yeah. Um so anyways, um, you know, with the with how precious everyone is. Yeah. And I got another story. Oh um, shit. And I don't want to be out there dissing like all my customers. Um, but the like I had a dude last night text through Instagram and he's like, Hey man, um I work for a company and we've just got all this shit rolling around in the back of the ute. Yeah. Um, what solutions do you have? I was like, hey man, flick us a photo of what you got in your ute. And he sent us a photo and straight up seen he's got a sprayer, he's got whipper snippers. Yep. Um, you know, he's got some other tools. So I was like, hey man, like we got trimmer racks, we got sprayer racks, um, we got we got a spool rack with a cutter. And he's like, I don't really know what I'm looking for. Can you like send through some pricing? And I was kind of like, hey man, this is all on the website. Like you can just yeah. check this out. Rah, rah. And he, he still said, so he was replied back and he's like, I just don't really know what I'm looking for. Yeah. So I sent him a few links and he responds back and he's like, no, I need like a one solution. So I don't need to have like a cargo net to cover yeah. the stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I can't help you. Yeah. Like I've sent you the trimmer. He's like, I've seen all this stuff. I need one solution for like all my gear. Get a fucking and canopy. <laughs> I wrote back, sorry, mate, I'm unable to help you. Yeah. And he fucking wrote back, okay, fine, I'll go somewhere else then. Like he was full butt hurt. Yeah. That I didn't have like this amazing. Magic fucking. This magic fucking ute tub <laughs> organizer thing. And I'm thinking like, and I was so close to writing back. Yeah. Like fucking. Um, I can only imagine you were just fucking burning to write back. And I didn't write back because I was busy with Nelly. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm, I'm just going on a sidebar rant about yeah, how precious right. everyone is. But like I just think with the direction that everyone is heading in, it's not that outrageous Yeah. Well, to, to put in place that you're not liable for smashed windows. Oh, well, I mean, we'll see. And like you said, there are exceptions. If you're on a nature strip yeah. and you smash a motorist's window, yeah. you know, like that, I'm not saying that, that the owner of that house has to be liable for that situation, but their own windows and their own car, win- like their own property, Yeah, I just, I'm just at the point where it, I think it's a good conversation to have mm. and not a bad thing to put out there um, Look, for our I fellow think, contractors. I think somewhere along the line an insurance company really should s- step up to the plate. And uh, I have a dream. Yeah, I think I think it would be a fantastic thing. I think they'd get a lot of business out of it. And I think, yeah, it's a bit silly that we don't see it more often. But um, I guess... I don't know, being sort of an unregulated industry in some aspects sort of puts it at a disadvantage for those sort of things. But I don't know, maybe, maybe in the future, maybe they listen, someone listens to the podcast and they're a fucking insurance company. I don't, I don't think that they do. <laughs> well, fuck, I didn't know Crest I, listens. So. I don't think that they do that. That was a surprise. Um. All right, so... Uh, Let's get on to your event, bro. Fuck yeah, dude. Because this thing is growing like a stiffy. Oh, my God. It's it's bigger than my stiffy, that's for sure. We um we just got word yesterday. So um, we've been plugging away pretty hard, you know, trying to get everyone there, like trying to get all all the peeps. <laughs> Wait, mean, trust me, your water. <laughs> so Benny's just picked up his water. He's like, oh, there's not much. Fucking Uncle BJ's less if coffee and his water in the gay garage. Oh, no. Yeah, look at me. I'm dry mouth. In the garage, eh? In the garage, yeah. Um, I just saw one of your kids walk past. What time is it? It's his bloody... Hey, Mia. 9.28. Where on the podcast? Why aren't you at school? Do you reckon if she sticks her head through the window, she can get on film? No, I don't think okay. so. I think it's it's focused wholly and solely on us. They're doing this drama thing. Oh, okay. And so, yeah... 
Like we, in the house, like drama, like, no, I'm not going to school. <laughs> uh, like, oh. Fuck off, mom. <laughs> um, anyway, back to the event, event time. Um, so 19th of August, kickoff is 9.30. Um, the, the hardest thing was to get a hold of um, a few of these brands and, and actually invite them because some of them don't get back to you on social media and they've got automated messages and blah, blah, blah. How many brands out there that do you think have verbally confirmed that are just not going to show? None. Okay. No one has said no. No, no. Ones that have verbally confirmed, yes. Oh. But then they're going to do a no show. Oh. Yeah, that's that's what I'm waiting for. Um, I reckon there'll be a couple. I'll, I'll fucking find them. And no disrespect to you. Or no. Yeah, but, you know, it's just I'm, yeah, it's, I'm just saying. Like, it's a Saturday. Look, I get it. It's a Saturday. You know what? I, I already know, like, all the important ones are going to be there. Um, all the ones that are important to us in our heart, hey. Yeah. I mean, like, realistically, they, they've already come forth with amazing prizes. Like, bro, I got four 21-inch battery and fucking – Petrol self propelled mowers to give away. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What battery one? Oh, uh, yeah. What battery? Oh, one I don't want to fucking tell you. It's a surprise. Oh, no, man. fucking AEG have come to the party, man. They they really ended up, and um, they've got a a uh, self propelled battery machine, and they fucking also hell. they also put in a blower kit. Am I allowed to enter? Stuff? I guess, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. my event. No, yeah, I should be allowed to enter. Yeah. yeah. You but I mean, them. I can't enter. I'm look, fucking sitting here going, oh, someone's put in a, a pizza oven. Um, the door prize is going to be an SFC 21. It's a brand spanking SFC 21 delivered to your door. Um, we have had Cox Commercial got back to me last night. They've got two 21 inch self propelled mowers. Uh, Greenworks come to the party. They're going to throw a commercial kit at us. Um, Ego is going to do the same. Um, bro. Fuck. There is like Mate, if, a ton of If you want to start a business, fucking come to Uncle BJ's event and um, buy a bunch of raffle tickets. You'll, you'll fucking, you'll, if you win, you'll be able to start. Now, everyone, speaking about Greenworks, right? Gary oh, Harvey. You are fucking hooked up. He fuck, he dropped off this fucking like June buggy. Yeah. Remember I that saw, song? I saw, yeah. Little, Little June, June buggy. buggy. On the sand. <laughs> um, Presidents of the United States of America. <laughs> Dude, I used to have that shit on tape. For some reason. I've got the album still. Do ya? I'm an absolute kook, hey? Listen to this lineup. So, like, when I was a kid, I was poor as fuck. And, and one one year I got, like, 20 bucks. and, and $20? That was, that was for my birthday. Fuck, that's um, shitloads back then. Yeah, I know. And I bought two tapes. And one was that. And the other one was Coco Jumbo because I thought the chick was hot. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Green Day. Nah. Ay, 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 Coco Jumbo. Ay, ay, ay. Hello. Is that the one where they're wearing like Not soccer? much. Oh, no, I don't, is I that know. the one where they're like wearing like soccer uniforms? Oh, fuck me. But the chick's like dancing and it's like a bad beach background. And then there's this big like yeah, Jamaican like, dude. Just... I think they're in like, I think they are wearing like soccer outfits. Fuck. Like, I'll have to go back. Fucking Coco Jumbo. I might have to use that on a reel. Yeah. <laughs> um, what the hell were we talking about? Uh, my event. Uh, Gary. Gary. Greenworks Gary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he dropped off this thing and um, he dropped it to my house and he gave me the 32-inch battery stander <laughs> as well. He gave you the 32-inch. Yes. And I couldn't breathe. No. Um, and um, I haven't messed with the 32 much. Um but man, this buggy, like, I, I drove it round to the horse paddocks. Yeah, we've been driving it out there. We've been super responsible. Like, haven't been thrashing it. But this thing is wicked. Like, it's <laughs> that full was, drive. That was a cheeky little disclaimer. We haven't been jumping the fucking thing. We haven't. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Well, I've got my kids with me. I ah, tell you what. Okay, fair enough. Nelly is seven. Yeah, and she's an awesome driver. Oh, really? Yeah, like. Um, well, if you ever get piss fit, like she has trouble walking. When you're man. older, <laughs> if you ever get piss fit when you're older, she uh, can be our DD. I don't know that'll happen. Actually, I got to say, your event, we're gonna go out. Yeah, we're gonna have a steak. We're gonna have a few beers with some industry people. Everyone's yeah. gonna connect and network. Yeah, Pash. it's gonna be really cool. We're gonna have, um, hopefully, some some key 
um, influences. Yep. But then not only that, we're going to have some really important folks. Like we're hoping Paul Sheen comes out. Paul Sheen better um, come out. You know, Rob Shearer is going to come out. He's a champion. A um, few of those people. Duncan will be there. Um, Rob Gilchrist, hopefully from Briggs and Stratton, will come out. We'll have Greenworks, Gary. Um, Gaz will come out and start sniffing some cocaine on the... <laughs> 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 Wait, I just want to say straight up that that I was only messing with that line. <laughs> he, Mate, if I have to fucking write down any more things, I have to delete out of that podcast. I'm going to run out of paper. Um, Crinkled paper. But... Um, People have been saying, like, since we since I shared that video of you and me doing shooters, yeah, people are like, oh, fuck, yeah, you know, rack them up, do this, do that. And um, because I had a two-day hangover, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that again. <laughs> so um, BJ will. Oh, fucking, yeah. Yeah, um, you watch. There's going to be some videos. I mean, look, I can probably get coaxed into doing one, one shot. Friendship sips. <laughs> I'll sneak in a flask and we'll have friendship sips. You can um we should do you a- can have a shot and then pash it into my mouth. <laughs> like a gum swap. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, um I can't believe- <laughs> we'll do like a um a bottle of Sambuca or something like that. I'll just buy a bottle and um we'll just line the bar with shots. Oh boy. Oh fuck. Um so yeah, well, where, well, where do we go from cum shop? <laughs> I don't know where we go from that. Yeah. Um, it would be so much better if we were teenagers. I know, I know. Because it doesn't say. And girls, probably. <laughs> hey. Probably would be better if we were girls. <laughs> hey, mate, it's 2023. People can swap <laughs> uh, come with whoever yeah. they want. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's 2023. I could wake up on that day and be like, yo, fuck this. I am now a girl. Yeah. I identify as a girl. <laughs> we can swap anything we want. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, fuck it, hell, Ben. All right. Let's get back to the program. Uh, yeah. So this event, man, it is going to be cool. Like we got someone cooking up bacon and egg burgers. We got a sausage sizzle. We're going to have a coffee van. That's actually one of the hardest things to find someone to do a coffee van on a Saturday. I've been fucking ringing everyone. Um, trying to get a coffee van. So if there's any any people out there in um, in the Brisbane area that know someone with a coffee van, tell them to come and they're going to get paid. Like as soon as I say charity event, people are like, what the fuck? Like I'm not doing this for free. I'm like, oh, no, you are going to get paid. Some of these fucking coffee vans, man, this is a this is a big money business. Like, But don't they just make money while they're serving coffee? No, so you, you hire them for the event yeah. and ask for their minimum charge. So just in case like... Oh, you so know, you could just pay them five hundred bucks and just drink whatever coffee you want. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the deal. Like they they're, they're going to come for four hours, um, and that's a lung orgasm. Yeah, huge. Fuck, like a pig's orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're going to come for four hours. We're going to fucking you know have coffees, you know. Uh, hopefully, a few of the people bring a few crates um, with some drinks and other things like that. But you know, you can come get a feed, throw some raffle tickets. All proceeds, so uh, it'll be like – it won't be expensive, but it'll be like a couple of bucks for a bacon and egg burger, a couple of bucks for a sausage. Um, obviously, like coffees will be free. Um, and then your raffle tickets. And you can potentially walk away with like a fucking three $3,000 self-propelled mower. Like it, there's fucking thousands and thousands of dollars worth of prizes ready to rock and roll. So um, I, I am so grateful. This community is fucking incredible. When, when things all come together – the only thing I'm terrified is there is no fucking plan B. If it rains, you all still have to come and just fuck around in the rain. Like maybe you should all go on the uh, bad workwear site and get yourself a Rain Defender hoodie and use our code SKULL all in caps and uh, help us out while helping yourself. And that way you can come, you can just walk around, you'll be warm, you'll be dry. That's it. And um, there's going to be um, uh, our homeboy Turtle from down – down south. Yeah, it's Turtle. I think Nanky's coming. Um, I spoke to Martin Safidi as well from Mow and Grow. Um, he, like, hopefully will come. Um, the Mowing uh, Mentor's coming. Mowing Mentor. Um, obviously, we'll be there. I was thinking about doing some sort of podcast thing, but, mate, we'll be, I'll be fucking flat out. Like, I think I'll be running around just making sure everyone's cool, doing some content. Um, I was thinking about doing something for LMCA as well um, because there's so many prizes coming across the board, like, I really think maybe offering something to LMCA as well would, would be good. And obviously it's 
it's going to be a raffle style thing. We'll raise some money for the red kite that way uh, for those who can't attend the event, which is unfortunate. And um, look, I really hope this this goes on to be an annual event, and um, we can just grow it. We can and, just make it bigger and bigger. And and Will from uh, Mole Merch is going to be there, yeah. and hopefully he can uh, crank out some t-shirts so that. Um, that would be slick. You know, you can rock up, buy your favorite brand shirt, <coughs> rep that. Yep. That would be awesome. Well, all the mower brands are coming. Like uh, even like Mean Green, I spoke to them yesterday as well. I had a fucking busy day on the phone. You know, I just I can't wait to get my Cub Cadet shirt, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's something that I haven't spoken. Well, I mean like. Bring, I got the number of the dude. Yeah? From MTD. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I might grab it. Yeah, I'll just, yeah. For sure. Cool. I mean, it, it, everyone else is going to be there. Yeah. Well, Hustler and Hustler and Cub should be there too. Um, that's only right. Um, that's one of the ones where I've reached out online and I haven't really had a response. So hopefully if I get that number, I can coax them into coming. Also, our newest sponsor for the Lawn Care Skull Sessions podcast, The Lawn Shed. Fuck yeah. Um, you know, they might also be there. So, oh, I hope so. Um, everyone's heard of Kevin Booth. Yeah. Um, so I'm yet to talk to him, yep. but, um, you know, he has done some things in the contractor community before in terms of social media. Cool. So, um, you know, he might be able to, um, yeah, set up something. I was hoping um, to see um, the ICL crew there, but I think they might have a conflicting uh, event. So that'll, that's a bit unfortunate, but... Um, they yeah. should just ditch their own event and come to, come to this yeah, one. Yeah, come rock and roll with us. No, look, I think it's just going to be a fun day. Lots of like-minded people getting together, showing off their rigs. Especially like the Brisbane guys, I encourage you to bring your rigs. Um, we've got enough room for you to park. Um, that's one of the things that's like confusing me right now is like there's a lot of space, but I don't want people to park like fuckwits. So <laughs> I don't want to have to go out and be like <laughs> directing parking. I want to enjoy the day as well and, like, get to talk to as many people as I can. Um, I don't know. Lots of things, lots of things happening. So it's, um, fuck, man, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and, you know, hopefully if the event is a success, then we can really build on this. Yeah. And maybe even move the event into state. Yeah. Um, and indoors. Indoors would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's obviously not possible, but I'd love to find a way to get Humongous there. No oh, man, I would love. Um, I would love. And for it's you a to mega reach over. for him to, you know, just pack up and leave everything for. Yeah, a it's like a four or five hour flight, isn't it, from WA over here? Like he's going to lose a whole whole day just traveling, and then yeah, he can sleep with me on my face. Yeah, um, on my bed, on top of me. So definitely looking forward to that event. 19th of August. If you don't come, you're a dog. Um, <laughs> oh, so that's, that's what I need to chuck on this soundboard is a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> or the DMX one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Where my dog's at? Um, oh, fuck. Any other news, man? Like we got, um, we got anything special? I had a little, little uh, rumour that um, the still brand... The steel branded Ferrises. So they um yeah, they're not they're not big in the market. They're not doing too great. Have you seen any on socials? I haven't seen any. Um and it, it realistically I haven't heard anything since the GIE. Nothing. Um so whether or not at the GIE, which was in October last year, maybe that was just like their preview. Maybe they were honey dicking us. I mean it's summer. In the US now, so you expect. I was, yeah, I was expecting to see a shitload coming but, through. But maybe it's more of like a next summer launch. Okay. Yeah, um, well, I could be. Look, I mean, I, look, at the end of the day, how fucking hard is it to just paint a machine? Yeah. yeah. It's not like they have to fucking, <laughs> they just you know, have to do it. They don't have in, to the, do, in the paint pot. They don't have to do any R&D. No, that's it. The machine's already built. Um, but oh. yeah. It's funny, man. Like there was so much hype about it and everyone was like, oh, fuck, are they going to do that here? Like it's a it's a wholly and solely North American thing. But um, it's just funny that it hasn't it hasn't popped up. I um, Well, I actually heard um, – I spoke to someone from John Deere, believe it or not. I know. Um, and I sort of said to him, I was like, you know, you guys really fucking dropped the ball by not bringing in 
John Deere stand-ons. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because John Deere, the, the John Deere stand-ons are the right. They're made by right. Oh. So they're just ZKs. Okay. And, um, you know, like they could have brought them in like years before Cox brought in the ZKs. Um, well, now Cox have got, got rights. Has right got it the the say so whether John Deere gets to bring them in? Do you think? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's sales to their factory. That's true. Yeah. So at the end of the like, day, theoretically, that's going in their pocket. They're probably almost making this. Well, they'd be making less money on each unit, but because. Ed well, would, would they Ed, be making less money, or would John Deere <coughs> have to fucking jack the price up for that green paint? Um, because look at Bobcat. An extra finger in the pie, and it's put the price up to um, well to compensate. I think just John Deere being. Oh, look. To be honest, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I I sort of was just telling them about that, and you know, um, I think they would have done well here with the stand-ons. Yeah, because of the contractor, you know, the council contractor market. Yeah, um, yeah. They I already think- had like a pretty big name, like a lot of closed cabin uh, machines rolling around my suburbs. That's for sure. Um, any of those huge brands, when we're talking Husvana, John Deere, Toro, and I'll put Cub Cadet in the same. Like obviously they're not they're not huge in the contractor market yeah. as well. But in terms of being like this big conglomerate, any of those brands could have brought anything out and yeah. probably done well. Yeah. Um, so, but then again. Husvana did fuck all with their stand on, and like to be they honest, they tried to bring it in, and apparently they're not bringing that in anymore. They probably looked at the markets, and and they'd already seen that. It, like this is before Cox got a hold of it. Like Wright had already been in the country, so they might not be making them anymore. Oh, okay. Like they were, they were absolutely making. Yeah, them. yeah. So same way Kubota, the Kubota stand on was a Bobcat. Oh, okay. Painted orange. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so, and I'm pretty sure that that's still the case. Jeez, yeah. all right. Yeah, it's really funny how like brands just slut out stuff. So yeah. one of the, um, I don't know if it's like a fucking MTD yardsman, you know, like those tractors. <laughs> like the one that's fucking sitting at the village? Yes. Yeah. Um, those, they were made by John Deere as well. Yeah. Okay. But don't you reckon it's just funny? It is weird. Like It's bizarre. Yeah. Um, so obviously those MTD ones, like they're fucking pretty low spec. Man, when you could, when you, when we bought, like Shory bought one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was like 1300 bucks. <laughs> oh, new. oh shit. Like that was, it's gone. Look, that's, back. that's, yeah. But that's a bargain still. Like, oh yeah. Even with inflation. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hey, something funny that happened on LMCA the other day. I saw that Conrad picked up, uh, actually got dropped off. By Greenworks, Gary, the 30-inch walk-behind. Yeah, he went and passed him before he came here. and. Oh, did me. he? You got sloppy seconds. So lucky Conrad got in first. But, um, look, this is no diss on Greenworks. It's just funny how I see some of these threads sort of rolling along. Um, nobody actually – so when the, when the SCAG came out, the 30-inch, the first like five or six comments were like, I've heard the weight, I've heard about the weight, I've heard about the weight, and people were just like – up in arms that it was fucking going to be way too heavy. But because the battery world has a perception of things being lighter, it just doesn't seem to be a non-factor when it comes to the battery equipment. Um, and look, I love the concept of of the 30-inch battery mower. I fucking I think it's awesome. And I know that Skag are working on one as well. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, it's just funny. They, they literally weigh the same fully loaded with batteries that that 30 inch green works and the skag weigh the same. They're almost a hundred kilos. Yeah. Well, I think it's just, I, I think the community is probably just unaware. Yeah. It's just a perception thing um, because it's the same with, you know, people think that all battery equipment weighs less than petrol. Just be, it's just that perception. But where, well, when you really look into it, it's, um, it's, it's only true when you come to handhelds, like when you and even when sometimes you look at, then it's not even true. But um, 
Like I mean, obviously the skins. Are, yeah, like yeah. standards and and zero turns and stuff. Like you got to fucking carry a mountain of battery, and that's a lot of weight to put on a machine. So yeah, it's it's funny to see. Like, and it'll be good to watch how they go about dropping weight in these machines because I know they will. That's that's going to be one of those things that they they apparently. Work on. So look, I mean, I've got the thirty skag um, right now. Yeah, and I. You know, this machine, how long's that 30 inch scat? How long's the SSC 30 been out for? Oh, I'd say maybe a year. Maybe? It's probably been over, has it, it's been well over a year since you've had one. Hey? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so, yeah. So in that time, I've never really messed with it. Yeah. Like hadn't used it. I've obviously seen one. Yeah. Haven't done anything with it. Since we've got our Ballard blades in, BJ's dropped his unit off to me to, you know, get some picks and, you know, mess around with some blades and yeah, see what yeah. combinations are working, stuff like that. And seriously, it is a fucking heavy mower. Yeah. And I found it like, I think if you had properties like mine, where you've got a thousand square meters with no access, mm. that it would be amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I made my little front section with it. Yeah. Um, pumped it out real quick. Fuck, that back <laughs> section would be, that would come up schmick. Yeah, it would, and I, I still can't even bring myself to do it. Like <laughs> I still just jump on the ride on. Yeah. Um, well, you got fucking twelve to choose from out there. You but <laughs> honestly, I look at the machine and I look at how that thing is built, and the deck is so superior to any other thirty inch. Like yeah. If you had to shed some weight, that's where you'd be shedding it. And yeah. I'm not talking about coming out with a fucking press deck, but like that that build is stronger. It's gonna be stronger than some zero turns. Yeah, it's it's like, gangster, eh? It is. <laughs> I love the sticker on the front. Uh, military grade steel. <laughs> I love that concept. I, I think it's awesome. Um, and I do think that they'll probably work on on dropping some weight out of it in the future. But I've got the caster kit ready to go at home. I, I got that last week and um, I would have taken the 30 back and done it over the weekend, but I might have to drop in on Saturday or Sunday and pick it up because um, I've got the turfy on board. Uh, but, yeah, man, I'm really excited to see how it goes with the caster kit. Because a lot of people just went straight for the caster model um, when that when that actually was released. Casters are just better. Yeah, I think I think realistically the caster model would be good. It'll give you better maneuverability and things. I like mean, that. it'll allow you to not have to lift the ass. Yeah, you know, to not do a little mono. Yeah, look, yeah. I'm a fat fuck, and I didn't find I didn't find using it that bad because it's a self propelled mower, and I used it where it was meant to be used. I didn't use it in a super tight access backyard or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I look, I, when it's in use, I don't find it difficult to use. Yeah. It's like when it's not in use, oh, it's okay. like, holy yeah. shit, how yeah. do I fucking move this thing? <laughs> um, and, you know, like, um, but anyway, what? I'm, more to the point, I think if there's a way that they can drop some of the weight, you can shed it out of the deck for sure. Yeah. And I asked Gary, because I haven't seen the, the, the Greenworks. Yeah. Um, I talked to Gary and I said, you know, is it, is it, you know, it's obviously very heavy. Is it built similar to this? And he said, it would be, it would be built very similar to this. So yeah. they're looking to shed about 10 kilos. Okay. Um, which I'm not really <laughs> Me sure. Too. I'm not really sure if that's enough. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm not really sure where you need to be weight wise. Yeah. Um, but 10 kilos kind of feels semi negligible when something is a hundred kilos. Mm. Yeah, um, okay. Well, I feel bad about my weight loss journey now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but in other news, bro, I got um, I got the swingbacks on my 21 and holy fuck, it just, it's just a fucking animal, man. I love that machine. Uh, it's really unfortunate at the moment though. We are suffering with a fucking stunted season right now. We have got no growth. Like I went to the 40 acres yesterday and I was standing in the middle of the 40 and it's been two months since I mowed it and it, I just walked away. I didn't mow it. It was fucking, it was just, it was it, nothing. It it's, has been tough and um, it's been tough for me to try and demo some of this gear because there's yeah. nothing to really do. Yeah, look, I've got this beautiful 21-inch fucking skag sitting there and I'm like, 
I'm just putting it over standard lawns and I know that it's an absolute beast. Um, the swingbacks, the airflow, like you can feel the vacuum change with the swingbacks to the bar blade. And I, I like the bar blade, but um, yeah, this, the swingbacks actually changed it dramatically and it's, um, yeah, it's an absolute beast. So I'm hoping that we do, I don't know, I hope we still have one good season before we get a real dry one and that way I can really highlight it but i think we're actually going to have an okay season okay? like there's people down south that are saying it's just constantly oh, raining dude like yeah so but once they get the opposite a, problem once they get a little bit of heat what i fear is in brisbane or queensland or whatever region yeah. you know where it's you know mid queensland to mid new south wales what i fear is because we're not really getting rain um I sort of fear that everything's going to kind of go dormant. Yeah. And then because we haven't had the moisture, it's going to dry out. And when that September sun starts kicking in in Queensland, she just burns everything. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we had been blessed the last few years, but that rain didn't always come in September. Yeah. So we did see a little bit of that. Oh. And if it doesn't come until December – it's going to cook the fuck out of all the grass. Unfortunately, I think you're the, right. The hedges will go on. Oh, yeah, the hedges. But I think in terms of grass cutting, yeah, uh, I'm only talking about Queensland at the moment because that's all I can really yeah. say. But that is my fear that if we don't sort of start getting a little bit more moisture and a little bit of that, you know, water base, yeah. when the sun kicks – because I tell you, I'm painting the side of my house – at the moment and yeah. it's winter <laughs> and the western sun belts down there and i'm legit in short shorts how short no huh <laughs> how short well not as short as what you think because I, <laughs> I don't have the pins to support it but no shirt and proper sweating yeah like getting a tan and everything. well you're punching white like white ish paint like mm. it's it'll be reflected straight back on your front oh, too bro like i am just beside myself thinking like i just you know I'm, I'm wiping sweat away and i got pain on my hands next thing i fucking dyed my face white and, you know, it's just like but um it's just amazing how hot it is in the actual sun yeah it's actually beautiful too like one of my favorite things has been just sitting out the back it's fucking terrible today man. i still want to commit suicide it's gloomy, I just had to look it's gloomy as fuck but um no look i i i've been enjoying like an afternoon coffee with the missus in the sun but yeah, when you sit there for a bit too long with a jumper on or something, you got to fucking whip that off and then it just keeps getting hotter. So I do get like the – we're still having some growth on hedges, which has sort of been good, but fuck, man, the grass is making me sad. Um, before we head out, I do want to put a little disclaimer out. The first time ever since we've started Catch Pro, we – I'm going away for a week. <gasps> oh. And so from like the 22nd to roughly just before the end of the month, we won't be able to ship any orders. Wow. Um, Good, man. We'll you need be, a holiday. Wait, we'll still be taking your money and we'll still be taking the orders. Just but we're just going to have a six-day shipping delay. Yeah. Um, That's fair enough. So for anyone out there, um, I, I thought I'd just put it out there for our listeners now. Yeah. Um, so if you want something, fucking get in before the 22nd. No, I think, look, realistically, it's, um, I mean, catch pros and things that we have on hand, we ship immediately. Yeah. But, you know, whipper grippers and certain things, um, sometimes people have to wait for anyway. Yeah. Um, so I still want to earn money that week, right, fuckers? <laughs> so what are you doing? Going down to Threadbow. Oh, yeah. Now, bad workwear. Yeah. Sent me a snowboard Sick. and it never rocked up. Oh. And did they actually send it or just say they were going to send it? No, so yeah, like it, uh, Ozpost said it was delivered and it wasn't. Fuck off. So, has someone stolen it? No, it didn't come here. Like, oh, I was okay. here. I, I was here when it said it got delivered. Oh. Yeah. They so, fucked up. Um, anyway, hopefully that arrives because it'll be really cool to uh, yeah. put that in the snow. And That's sad, just, man. Just interesting. You know? Maybe they can send you another one. Um, well, that's what I've kind of said to them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'll leave in a week, so we'll see. Oh man. Um, so I'll put the shout out to, um, <laughs> anyone in Brisbane who 
who wants to jump on and do a podcast with me. I think maybe that um, that would be pretty fun. Well, actually, I leave next Saturday, so oh, we can still do it. Yeah, we can still. Oh, shoot. okay, fuck it then. Um, Sorry, oh God. no, but I would be gone until the following Saturday. So yeah, you could do a podcast yeah. without me. You fuck with dog. Yeah, fucking sweet. Um, yeah, fucking come on board. Do one with Rusty. Wants- He's house sitting. Oh, is he? That would be fucking. Yeah, hilarious. who wants to have a chat? Rusty one niner, no one finer. Smiling at a minor. <laughs> oh, that gets weird. Yeah. It got real creepy. Um, all right, cool. Well, I've had enough for today. Yes, yeah, sweet, bros. Hopefully the energy was up a little bit. Um, and I want my coffee. Hopefully the volume's up a little bit yeah, as well. That's cool, man. I've got shit covered now. Um, so thanks for joining us for today. Until next time, I'm at Catch Pro. He's at TBL. And we're out of time. Peace. Peace.